Hello everybody, welcome back to the ASUS YouTube channel. This is JJ once again, and we're bringing you something that a lot of you have been waiting a really long time for, and that's the latest generation of brand new PCI Express 3.0 graphics cards. So there's been a lot of uh, gestation going on uh, you know, regarding these cards, when they were gonna come to market, when they were gonna be available, what was the performance gonna be like, what's the feature set, and uh, we're gonna be doing an unboxing and overview of actually the current flagship uh, from this latest generation of graphics cards. So right here we actually have uh, the brand new ASUS HD 7970 graphics card. This is actually based on AMD's brand new Southern Islands architecture. Um, it actually replaces their previous generation architecture with a brand new GPU architecture that's referred to as uh, GCN. And this is a real big fundamental shift in terms of what they're doing on the inside of the card. Um, now this ultimately will translate to a big increase in terms of performance, uh, whether you're a, a gamer that's focused at having high resolution gameplay with all the image quality and all the fidelity options set to max, or somebody that's interested in multi-monitor uh, gaming performance, or even you guys that are interested in taking advantage of 3D gaming, um, or any of the subsets of kind of those permutations that you have available to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look here at the box uh, reference some of the initial features that we see here before we dive into some of the comparative points at uh, how it compares to the current marketplace of AMD graphics cards and what it brings new to the table in terms of not only the feature set and the architecture as well as some of the performance metrics that are out there. So um, we can see right here we've got the, the box, it's pretty straightforward and uh, We've got a couple of items that are called out here readily. Now one of them, uh, we're going to go into a little bit later when we get into the actual unboxing of the GPU itself, but this is our brand new software with GPU Tweak. Now GPU Tweak has been around for a little bit. We originally launched it um, with a previous generation ROG graphics cards, our Matrix series. Um, but this will be the actual introduction of GPU Tweak for our entire series of graphics cards. So this will be uh, a great option for users that are looking to have customization and configuration parameters available to them for both AMD and for um, other, other uh, GPU types that are on the market. Now taking a look at some of the other options that we have here, we can see that of course the graphics card supports Ifinity um, and this actually is supporting Ifinity 2.0. Now this comes through a number of enhancements that AMD has made on the driver level um, that allow you to have much more configuration parameters such as universal bezel adjustment um, or different types of panel configurations such as uh, 5.1 uh, panel configurations allowing you to really be able to kind of mix and match what's going to work best for you and the multi-monitor environment that you're working with. We then have three gigabytes of uh, frame buffer support with GDDR5. This is a big change versus the previous generation on the HD6000 series where the flagship cards only offer two gigabytes of frame buffer. And that's really gonna be advantageous for users that are looking for high anti-aliasing options and high resolution. So for you guys that are you know, playing uh, 1920 by 1080 or 2560 resolutions or greater or multi-monitor configurations, those three gigabyte frame buffer is really gonna come into play in terms of being able to help you maintain those large textures and giving you more uh, solid gameplay. Um, next over we move over to a really big one which is PCI Express 3.0. Now this is a, a little bit of an interesting consideration because as of right now there is actually only one current chipset and CPU architecture that lets you take advantage of this and that's the Sandy Bridge eCPU from Intel as well as the X79 chipset. So take for example uh, ASUS's current lineup of X79 motherboards all readily support um, PCI Express Gen 3.0. Now in current gameplay you're not necessarily going to see an immediate advantage but there are some advantages in terms of a um, more efficient actually pipeline in terms that not only you have an increase but it's more efficient at actually transferring data through the PCI Express 3.0 subsystem. So this actually can help to minimize uh, potential frame buffer issues, micro stutters, uh, latency, um, as well as that if you readily are loading the card and let's say you bypass utilizing this card uh, from just a purely graphic standpoint and maybe consider it from a compute standpoint to do different types of workloads like that, you could actually see a difference between PCI Express 2.0 and PCI Express 3.0. But keep in mind to fully take advantage of this, you are going to need the latest generation uh, X79 series motherboards as well as a Sandy Bridge E CPU. And lastly, of course, we have DirectX 11 support. Now, there are some changes in terms of what the GPU is bringing to the table. Uh, this new uh, Southern Islands uh, GCN architecture actually enables support for DirectX 11.1, which will be uh, supported later on, actually, when Windows 8 comes to market. But it's great to be able to have a product that not only supports 
all the current DirectX 11 standards and API functions such as tessellation and more, um, but also support the next generation of functions that will be introduced uh, when Windows 8 comes to market. So with that noted, uh, let's actually go ahead and jump into this and, and take a look and see what we actually have inside the box. So one of the uh, biggest changes that we're going to see uh, when we actually take a look at the physical card itself is, is that there's been some changes to the the actual uh, reference heat sink and fan assembly. And with the reference heat sink and fan assembly, um, they've actually maintained their blower design, but uh, they've actually made it a bit more efficient. So what we're first gonna do before we actually jump into this card though, is take a look here at our accessories. And we're gonna see what actually comes included inside here. So first off the bat, we've got our installation guide. And manual. This also contains, of course, the, the support installation disk, which not only has the actual driver for the graphics card, but also our GPU tweak software. So make sure to keep that in mind. We have our uh, Crossfire cable, because this actual GPU does support uh, two-way, three-way, and actually even four-way Crossfire configurations. So it would actually be a, a great option uh, for users considering any one of our X79 boards and for you guys that are looking for the real high-end solutions, our, our Deluxe or WS or uh, Rampage series of motherboards, uh, which are offering four-way SLI, uh, four-way Crossfire support would be a great option. So here we also have an adapter allowing you to take your uh, display port mini connection and actually take it over to an actual DVI. Uh, as we'll see when we actually take a look at the card, there's a lot of display connectivity available to this. And there's also been some changes. Uh, this new architecture actually supports the newest revision of DisplayPort. And one of the key advantages that you have with it supporting DisplayPort 1.2 is the ability for it to maintain Quad HD resolution. So that means resolutions of 4096. Um, while there aren't necessarily panels that are right now on the market, this is a big plus in terms of giving you a long term graphics card in terms of the support for extended resolutions. We then also have a PCI Express adapter uh, allowing you to go from your 8 pin configuration to dual 6 pins. Although we uh, generally advise that, of course, uh, for this type of graphics card, you want to get a match power supply and ideally have one that provides uh, the 6-pin and 8-pin uh, configuration that you're going to need to normally run the card. And next up, we also have HDMI to, once again, a DVI adapter. So those are the, all the accessories that are included here inside the box. So next up, we're just going to go ahead and actually take a look at the actual card itself. So here we've actually got our ASUS 7970 graphics card. So there's uh, quite a number of changes that have uh, been introduced in terms of this card, in terms of what we have comparing it to the current generation. There's actually so much that I'm going to actually reference a couple of notes that I have here um, when we're referencing it uh, to the current generation. So when compared to the 6970, um, we're taking a look at stream processors on this card being 2048 versus 1536. Uh, texture units being 128 versus 96. Our ROPs are actually the same at uh, 32. And uh, the core clock has actually also been changed. Uh, we now have a core clock of 925 megahertz and a uh, core clock on the 6970 was actually 880 megahertz. Now one of the really cool things that we have with this card is, is that AMD has produced the first graphics card on the market to be based off of a 28 nanometer high K um, fabrication process. What this gives you actually an advantage of is to be able to produce a card that also allows for higher clock frequencies. Now if we take a look actually at the kind of the form of the card, you can see that it is actually a lower type or does expel here we have the actual vents. Now this type of design actually does really do a good job at actually actively cooling uh, the 925 megahertz stock clock speeds, but it also definitely allows you to have sufficient cooling to be able to push and overclock this card. Um, and take for example utilizing our GPU tweak software, which actually does give you the ability to adjust both the core voltage and the memory voltage, we were actually able to easily exceed 1100 megahertz in terms of the actual clock speed. So um, you know 200 megahertz overclocks are not necessarily going to be unreasonable on this card so it really goes to show you that AMD has uh, kicked up the game in terms of allowing you to have not only a default high clock speed but even able to take it further to give you more performance out of the card. So um, 
Moving over, our effective uh, clock speed for memory is essentially the same 1.375 gigahertz, still based off, off of uh, GDDR5. Uh, the frame buffer, as we noted, is three gigabytes of frame buffer. And uh, overall, in terms of the actual transistor count, it's a pretty big change. It's uh, 4.3 billion transistors versus the previous 2.6. Uh, billion transistors. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and from here take a look at actually the display output connectivity. So first and foremost, we actually have a dual link, dual DVI. So this is a great option for the users looking for high resolution 30 inch panel support. So 20, uh, 2056 in terms of the resolution. We then have our HDMI, which this is the actual fast HDMI spec. So not only supporting your current standard 1080p, but also supporting actually 3D, um, and then also supporting Quad HD, so a 4, 4,996 resolution. And then also two mini display ports, which also support um, not only passing over audio because it's the latest generation of DisplayPort, but also supporting that Quad HD resolution. So you can see AMD's really stepped it up in terms of giving you really the most expansive and the most robust current display outputs on a high-end graphics card. Now, on the top of the card, we can see that, of course, we have a vented design, which works in conjunction with the, the blower type um, heatsink and fan assembly that we have. Now, this has a great benefit in terms of helping to exhaust some of the hot air out of the actual heatsink and fan assembly body. But one of the potential disadvantages is, is that this card is going to have to rotate this fan at a higher level once placed under higher load. And this is going to produce a card that's going to have a little bit of an audible sound to it when you're under the heaviest game loads. Now in our testing, we found the temperature performance is quite good. Uh, when generally looking at idle performance, you were somewhere between about uh, 36 to about 40 C. Uh, this of course might change a little bit for you depending on your ambient temperature. And when under gaming load, your gaming load was going to be anywhere between about 72 to as much as about 78 uh, C and that was even actually under overclock configurations which peaked out at 1100 megahertz. Now keep in mind though that when we were actually going up to that uh, uh, to that frequency and we were under the game load uh, you're going to be looking at a fan rotation speed anywhere between about 2200 to about 2400 RPM. That's about 40% of what the actual fan speed allows for, um, which as I noted is going to be clearly audible. Um, it's not extremely loud, but it is going to be an audible uh, sound footprint that you're going to have. Now one of the great benefits that we do have with our GPU tweak software is, is that you're going to be able to tweak and tune the actual fan curve to your heart's content. So you can go in there and you can make an adjustment that if you want the fan curve um, to essentially be, you know, when it's uh, under load and at a temperature of 60 EC, it'll never go over 50% in terms of the fan or 30% or 20%. So you can really kind of tweak and tune. So that's a lot more flexibility that actually is offered by default in terms of the fan control in Catalyst Control Center. So you definitely want to be able to check out uh, GPU Tweak's functionality in terms of being able to tweak and tune your fan options. Now, um, moving over to some of the other options that we have here in terms of connections on the card, we've got, of course, our physical by 16 uh, PCI Express 3.0 uh, interconnect. And then moving over to the other side of the card, we have our actual our power connections. So we've got the uh, standard 6-pin, and then we have our 8-pin. So that's uh, your normal power. In terms of what the card's going to be looking at, uh, depending, of course, on the load, your uh, power consumption for the card is going to be somewhere approximately between about 250 to about 280 watts. So in, in most kind of modern enthusiast systems, we're probably recommending at least a 650 watt high quality PSU, um, but uh, for you guys that are of course interested in going with uh, crossfire configurations, whether it's two-way, three-way, four-way crossfire, you're definitely going to want to consider of course a higher rated wattage PSU as well. Now uh, lastly we do actually have uh, two uh, switches. Uh, they're very tight here on the top of the card. We actually have a one and a two. So we can see right here there's a one indicator and then there's a two indicator. And those can actually allow you to define a different BIOS mode of operation. So you do keep that in mind in terms of being able to set the card to a more aggressive uh, performance level. Uh, and by default, it's rated for its normal level of operation. Okay. And uh, that overall gives you a little bit of a conclusion in terms of the overview 
regarding the actual cards, uh, physical functionality, and uh, some of the actual performance characteristics. Now there's some other interesting things that AMD has done in terms of this new generation of card as well. Now, as we noted before, this actually is based off of a new 28 nanometer process. And one of the cool things that you have with the 28 nanometer is a new technology that AMD has incorporated called uh, zero core power. And what this means is that the card, when it's under actually idle uh, operation, has the ability to essentially have almost no uh, wattage draw. So in, in those type of configurations, you could be looking, um, you know, uh, to almost zero to you know maybe three, four, five watts. So very, very little power. And as a benefit, um, when the card's essentially in that idle level of operation, this actually fan right here will actually stop rotating. So you get a really efficient, quiet, great design for that kind of 2D uh, desktop experience when you're running, you know, essentially not any high level workloads on the card. So this is a, a great option to have. And this also is reinforced even when we go into the 3D desktop space and when you are really pushing the card to its peak's limits, um, it's quite efficient in terms of the amount of power that's using to give you the actual performance level that it's offering. So, you know, rounding it all uh, around, this is definitely a flagship series graphics card, which is really focused at you guys that are looking for all your image quality, you know, people that want to have Battlefield 3, 1080p, anti-aliasing, atroscopic filtering, tessellation, you know, and all those high-end options turned on, um, and you want to be able to have a higher consistent minimum frame rate, higher maximum frame rate, and overall better average frame rate, this is the card to get uh, for really pushing that level of experience. And when matched with the high-end platform, it's overall really going to give you uh, the, the best gaming experience you can get right now on the market when it comes to that. So that overall gives you a little bit of an overview regarding uh, the latest generation of AMD graphics on uh, the Southern Islands uh, family, the 7970 graphics card. As always, if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them here on the page um, or, or hit us up on any of our social media channels, whether it's Facebook or Twitter. Thank you.